Huge kill. Playing off to those. I love it. We're playing off the boom bot. 2v4 situation. Not looking too good here. Big kill from Jet. A whiff here from Reyna. Oh my goodness. This is now winnable. Oh. Result out popped. Love this. 2v1 situation. Huge kill. Oh my god. We have to go to tap. We have to go to tap. Tap to get them out in the open. Love this. 3, 2, 1, swing. In the pocket position. Okay, this is, that means he's got to be wrapping. He's got to be wrapping. Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, it's day 10. We're back on Bind. And like we talked about last time, Bind is a map all about map control on long and shower. Controlling those areas and allowing for a staging ground through hooker and short to be able to make it a little bit easier to take your sights. On this map, particularly in this particular game, we have a really well-rounded comp. Right away, we have a single duelist plus another duelist which means we have a dive comp right here we have a dive comp with the entry fragger from jet and entry fragger from wuhuj in this situation so this is actually really good because it creates a little bit more flexibility for wuhujin to move around the map doesn't necessarily have to be entering and taking space for his team all the time he can hit lurks which is going to be very important all of this map is really about timings, controlling the TP, so being able to lurk around the map can create some opportunities for you. Now, the one thing we are missing is the Viper on this particular comp, which allows for lurk walls and different kinds of plays like that. We do have a Clove that will take over for the controller role in this situation, which still is okay in a ranked environment, not so great for a team environment, but a great for a ranked environment right here, but a well-rounded comp. The one thing we need to be asking for, again, we've talked about this several times in previous VODs, how is the initiator enabling Wuhujin here? Are we going to be asking for flashes? These are the things that were big holes in Wuhujin's game. Let's see if he's fixed them now. Right away going to showers. Love this. Oh, okay. Going with sky showers, enabling through the flashes. This is what we've been talking about for a long, long time now. I'm glad that he is finally taking the reins of that yes, communication right away, enabling and asking for friendship right away, which is good. Friendship is good. We're only a couple games away from Immortal 3, and really the biggest drivers between Immortal 3 to Radiant is going to be asking to be enabled, so love to see this. Great flash, great double satchel, we full control this area. I don't know if we necessarily need a double satchel, I get why we did it though. The reason why we double satchel there is to catch someone who might be slipping on that flash. So, a reasonable reason to do this. One thing that, like, once again, we talked about, because there is two entry duelists, we can be a little bit more flexible with our use of the satchel, so this is a totally fine play right here. Covers out bench. Now we have full control over the front and side of sight with the clove smokes here. So this is really good. And right now he has flexibility to be aggressive if he wants to be through this smoke. Should be asking for a flash here if there is one. Or a dog here would be great. No flash. That's unfortunate. He's just going to play his life now, hopefully. He is falling into a really poor position here. So in this situation, we have a 5v4. Now, obviously, Sky decides to move forward, and there was kind of an unclear communication from the Sky in the situation, so it made it a little bit confusing for Wuhujin if we should be pushing forward or not. I believe Wuhujin's thinking, I fall back because I don't want to play the numbers and the time and all that good stuff. So now he has a split section, uh, second to be able to make the right decision here, which would be to fall back to bench. So he decides to kind of go in between two decisions, and he ends up being caught out into the open. So this is really just a, when you're playing at this level, it's a fraction decision between two options. We either move forward or we move back. Wuhujin was kind of in a spot, if we go back a little bit further, where he was kind of confused as to what to do next. I don't, I think he is asking for something here, and that's where the sky didn't have anything. And now we're kind of in this spot where we don't really have a purpose. So typically when you don't have a purpose, the easiest thing to do, especially when the bomb is being planted, is right now you make the decision to fall back towards bench or you fall back towards showers and just hold for the post plant in that situation. So a little bit unfortunate, a little bit of indecision here. I call this the gray area protocol. So a lot of people struggle with this. It's when you're in two, in between two decisions. We have light and we have black here. You have or uh, left and you have right and you decide to be somewhere in this middle area area where you're kind of like, do I go left? Do I go right? What do I go with? It's always good to choose one option, stick with it, and it's easier for you to VOD review and figure out what it is that you should do. If you don't pick a decision, you're kind of like, hmm, what do I work on and what was the best decision? You will never know. So always just commit no matter what. All right, all right. May we keep a ghost on Cypher and yeah. then we go 4B long with Cypher lurks, eh? 
Okay, I love this. This is a 4-1 strat. So this is a perfect strat against an eco team because you're keeping the brunt of your forces together. It's likely you're not going to get picked off or take any awkward long range or uh, short range fights. Not take any awkward short range fights. The one solo player needs to play their life and be very, very careful. Take their time, look around. They can even work towards Hooker right now and just spot for the push out because the two most common plays, as we talked about in previous games on eco, are aggressive and stacking so we want to be able to make sure that we get information from our cypher and from our sky right now to figure out if there's a stack on b and if we go towards long together we can keep the enemy in front of us and limit the chances of getting picked off and thrifted be very careful if you're the jet buying a vandal in the second round for numerous reasons the last thing you want to do in a ranked environment when you're solo queuing is drop that vandal and have people not really fully understand what they should be doing or picking that up especially in the lower ranks if you drop that vandal to the enemy team all of a sudden the round goes in the other favor so you have to be very very careful with buying that gun i often recommend stick with bulldog or guardian in these situations so long completely cleared out here Dog clears up, up close. And now we can boom bot in. So a fake on this situation here. Cypher gets a pick over towards A and there's people rotating. So it's perfect. Unfortunate blind. We don't actually need to move forward here at all. I think he might be thinking about satcheling in here, which is okay. He'll catch a time if he does, but he doesn't necessarily need to do that right now. Okay, so he's not going to go for it. Good. This is the right play. The aggressive play would have been to go into that smoke, uh, but you run the risk that someone did stick around here. A lot of noise was made over towards B, a lot of scaling, all that good stuff, and the dog. Usually these are signs that they're going to be executing on the bomb site. So naturally a call out at this level would be that they're rushing B. So this is going to rotate people around. So there was a chance, I think if he didn't get flasher, he could have double satchel in this position, but ultimately it wasn't really necessary, especially when you're on an eco, there's really no need to take that risk. Just be aware that your actions have a cause and effect and it forces people to move around. When you make them move around on defense, that's when they have the biggest opportunity to make a mistake and that's when you can actually take space aggressively like that. So getting picked off in this situation, unfortunate. Let's see what happens here. Short. I think this is just an excellent shot from the clove here in the situation. I'm not sure there was much that we could have done other than play towards showers. There really is no need to be out here at all in the situation. You'll notice that Wuhujin is playing from bench. Now this is a great angle if you have a gun that's gonna serve for long range. You'll notice that he goes in for the scope range, uh, scope in range here. Now this is an angle that in this level will be pre-aimed and pre-fired. So there is a little bit of a risk versus reward, not really much reward, holding a ADS at this range with Spectre. Not a great long range weapon. So do we need to be here, especially in a 5v2? That's the question that Wahuja needs to ask for himself right now. And my answer is probably not. Playing towards showers is more than enough just playing at the time of the bomb and let the bomb explode. One thing that Wuhujin's actively improved on over these last 10 days is communicating what his plan is. And already we've seen him asking for the sky flashes and all that good stuff. So this is all massive improvements Whoa. on his part. Confirming for his team. I jump spot. Could be someone close. Clears yeah. up the I gotta take you truck off. angle here. Needs out. He's. Do you hear what he said there? This is something that I talk about with students a lot. This is a really, really good sign from Wuhujin. So already in the pre-round, he communicates, so pre-round, he communicates what he's going to do. All right? What he going to do. What going to do? Okay? What are you going to do? Then he confirms it a second time, so two times. And now in the actual round, he confirms through action comm. So listen to this again. Action comms comes afterwards. Action comm is basically what you're going to do when you're going to do it so that everyone is on the same page because a lot of people gloss over these facts a lot of times. So listen to what he says here. I'm going to take you all. Confirms it again, taking you all. Let's hear if he communicates the action 321. No action. It is okay though, he did communicate that he's gonna go in. So this is totally fine, I'll give it to him. Beautiful path thing, love this. Good close range weapon fight is what you're looking for. That's the kind of path you want to take if you're gonna be using this kind of gun. Okay, so this is where I'd probably throw a boom bot in to stall out. 
Boombot should be leading in. Boombot has been a problem for Rahuj uh, a little bit here. I think this is now the time where you must throw it. We already know that we're in here. There's no sense in not. Okay. He's taking an aggressive fight. I'm totally cool with that. Boombot comes out. Beautiful. Nade to stall as well. All really good moves here. Love this. I like this too, grabbing the shotgun, because he's expecting that they're going to push through here. If they don't, he's going to have to switch back. Switch back now. Excellent. Nobody's on it. In a 2v1 situation, it's so important to be communicating with your teammate, what they're doing, what your actions are. Ends up working out. Excellent work. Really well planned. Love the shotgun play, the pathing into sight. Everything that happened there was excellent. Even the boombot usage, so much more improved over his last VODs. Going for the swing, this is something that Dopai recommended um, Wuhujin to do in his last bind video. Just go for the wide swing. I believe it was, I think it was Jing they were talking about. I could be wrong. There was there was someone that they were talking about specifically that they were VOD reviewing. So he's going for the wide swing here. Uh, he probably communicated, I didn't get to hear it. He's going for the wide swing here. And he identifies right away there's a cipher. So at this point, I would think that this is probably the weaker site, probably two, maybe one. One, pe one person on here. Uh, that means the stronger side is probably going to be towards A, so we can totally execute on this side right now and take advantage of it. On top of that, they're on eco, so this wide swing is a perfect time to do it. Keep breaking the cam. I broke cam. So He's we should be confirming. Close up, close There's close one up, close, close up. right. This I'm is perfect. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we should have some space here. Okay, so there is a stack on the site. Oh, oh. I did not that. So Smart play from them. Plan. Now, the one factor you want to think about all the time. This is just for a general fact. I don't think Wuhuji is going to make this mistake. Smoke's here, smoke here. This is really, really dangerous for us. We want to stay the hell away from it, especially when they're on a low buy like they are right now. So smokes are not your friend when you're against an eco or when you're down, when you're up numbers. Keep away hey, from Jack, them, keep distance. You can hide on. Hey, yeah, on it. Holy fuck, this guy doesn't care. <laughs> I hate it in a man. Really you guys just don't give a fuck. It's true. It's totally true. So why is it important for this jet to have complied with what Wuhujin wanted to do? Imagine a world where this jet decides to push through this smoke, but the raise wasn't seen through Cypher. Now the raise is over here and starts pathing into that smoke. All of a sudden, this is a 1v1, that vandal goes away, and you're looking at one person here and two people on site. This is looking like a nasty spot where it could be very, very losable. So avoid pushing smokes when you're up numbers or against an ego. I want to just reiterate the reason why Wuhujin can actually give commands here right now is that he's been identified as Wuhujin early on into the game. So people give him a little bit of respect. So the commands that he's giving, you gotta be very, very careful in ranked giving commands. People don't like commands. Once you tell them what to do, they'll tell you why you help tell me how to live my life and they'll start throwing a game as me negative, all that good stuff. So instead of giving command comms, what we wanna do is suggest plays. Hey Sky, after you're done flashing there, could you dog me short so I can path into sight? That's the way you wanna ask it, make a suggestion. You wanna make it about you so that you can do something for them. Same satchel. They probably know he's there. Yeah, this is the only problem. They probably know he's there because he's been called out in the situation. There was not much he could have done other than maybe boom bot it. Um, so he can draw a crosshair placement. Or he stays in backside here. He has that option as well, being that cloves over here. So you could just back out this way and you just leave the person in this position. Nothing that they do here is going to be of any consequence. So right now, it's a 3v3 situation up to this point. We could have fell back, could have played with our clove, could have played with our teammates, could have grabbed bomb at this point, and then decided to go somewhere else at that point. Come on, I just got it. I'm gonna go U-Haul. Doing this alone. That was a little bit. I'm sure he knows this is a little bit of a tech problem. Wide out in the open. Could have done this a little bit earlier, I think. And he's exposing himself to an area that wasn't fully cleared. And he was just killed from there. So, small little mistake here. Nothing crazy. It's a nitpick, if anything. Could lead to a death. There's no need to path or do anything right now. We're totally fine in a 5v3 situation. Oh, back sight. Back sight and then triple. Triple. Reina triple. 
I know exactly where you are. We could ask for a sky alt here. Backside now. Last player standing. Damn. Katie Smith. NT. Okay, so this is where I would say that we've had this kind of problem before too. If Cypher's alting, ask for the sky alt. Why not? You ask for the sky alt, it kind of counters the alt. You're doing alt for alt. And we have a real chance of winning this round right here. So why not give it something? One alt here could change everything. Jet still has a Vandal right now. There's a lot of opportunity. So I think we just ask for the alt here. And we've done this before. We've talked about this a few times. This is kind of like looking at the macro and the options that you have. And layering your alts in a way that can counter the enemy. The key here is to do as much damage as we can. Um, the win is unlikely considering the fact that Raze has ult as well, so they can lock this down. He hears people towards the back site, could single out a fight right now, and there's also a chance of someone swinging out right over here, so he has to make a gamble, and there it is. Double peek. A lot of times I recommend in these situations, just be first. Be aggressive, attack them, go for them first. The reason why is if you wait a lot of times at this level, you'll get double swung out here. I was actually worried about a triple swing or even a double swing from that angle, but this was also a valuable one, a uh, valuable swing as well. Um, in this situation, in these levels, you can't wait for them, otherwise they're going to overwhelm you like this. So be aggressive and be first. Oh, How the fuck did everyone die? Like, I got first blood? It's 5v4 and everyone's dead, bro? Always remember that Hujin is trying to be entertaining as well, right? And he uses this for content, all like I said. But we want to make sure that for us, we don't use that mental. The last thing we want to do is live in the past. When we live in the past, we live in a, in a depressed mindset. We don't want to be depressed. If we live in the future, we live in the anxiety mindset. We're worried about, you know, how the result of this game is going to be or how it's going to affect our, 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 all this stuff. These are stories that we tell ourselves. This is like a video that's playing in our head that only we can see. What we need to do is stay as present as possible. When we're present, we are Zen. We are focused and we are in the moment. When you're in the moment, you can look at the scoreboard and say to yourself, what do I need to do this round to be able to win this round? What do we need to do? What would we, what do we do in the past to be successful, right? And what do we do here to be unsuccessful? Let's avoid those things. I'll say this for example, the rounds that we did win, we went towards long and we took showers control. That was the pistol. That was the rounds leading up. As soon as we started pathing through here and trying to do uh, shotgun plays and other plays throughout this space right here and taking that, that's when we started falling apart. So I want to see Wuhujin going back to what works this round. Stay present, stay focused. There's like a trip deep. We're looking at two again on the site, most likely, with well. Cypher being there. Okay. We've seen this before numerous times. I'm totally fine with him going here because he's raised. That makes sense. Communicating and action calming every single play that you're doing. I have all. He's starting to, when he gets tilted at results, it's when he stops communicating if he's going to be going in or not. Now this guy decides to throw a flash, and the timing of the flash and the satcheling is not correct. The guy calls this out, but Wuhujin also doesn't give any clear communication in this point to where he's going to be going in. So because of that, the sky's flashes are going to be completely off. So eating this flash is a complete result of that inaction and that inability to communicate your actions at the time of, of, of opening. I'm glad he's not raging at this because he has no right to. That's actually a great trade. We love that. Fight through CT. Fight through CT. So in that situation, if you're Clove, I recommend you just full send into CT and see if the rain is there. If the Reina is not there, this late into the round over here, we know they have to be coming from forward. But because we died here, that Reina could have been hiding around the corner and took a timing after the Clove died. So we wouldn't have that information. So that would have been a selfless play in that situation. You know you're gonna die anyway. Just full send and see if they're there. They could already be over. 
Yeah. Ooh, Lee, bro, does not care. All of these are timing. <laughs> See, this was the timing I'm talking about right here. So I'm going to put this one on Clove. But for those Clove mains out there that are looking to make these kinds of plays, be selfless in those moments. You're already dead. Scout forward. If you've made the wrong decision, you can't find them. Keep scouting forward and clear that angle completely. Yo, I can do a counter pillar smokes and we can go out. You wanna do it? I'm ready. I'm ready. Five. Thanos. One box. One box. Copy. One box. This is an absolute shit show. These smokes here. So there's a wall. Because of that, if we're going out, you're separating everyone's line of sight towards hookah. So if you're going to go off of that, you're basically putting yourself up shit creek without a paddle. Now it's fine for the players that are coming up from long. They can get control of elbow pretty easily and backside if they wanted to, but I wouldn't say go to backside. This is a really good layering smoke pattern that we used to do back in beta to be able to take that elbow space. And you can even deposit an elbow space, but definitely not something that we can satchel through over here. So I think this is just a little bit of a spacing issue. And I believe that Wuhujin actually couldn't entry here. It had to come from the jet instead of him. So remember that this is a double dive. And because it's a double dive comp, you don't necessarily have to be doing the diving yourself, especially if jet has the better pathing option right now. We could actually be kind of like falling back and be more of a flex duelist waiting for these smokes out. There's only 13 seconds lasting. Stay in hookah and then fight from there. Yeah, yeah, Going to the old faithful outlaw on the second round after winning pistol here. We've seen Mohujin use this angle several times. Yeah. Just much faster this time. We have two on short. Another, short. Another one short here. Last one short, should be the call. Just make sure that you get into the habit of calling it out. Okay, so last time we struggled playing the exact uh -oh. same position. And I know Dopai went over this with Hooj a few times. So again, going towards showers, playing to a different angle on short. These are the things I want to see being the evolution from Hoojin since our last VOD review here. So it looks like he's going to try to change an angle. I'm not really sure if he knows what he wants to do right now. I think he's holding nade for maybe a B response because they were kind of almost ball. successful in B in the first pistol round. Cypher? Just their Cypher though. What's this? What about that Hooka. Hooka? This is always, okay, this is always dangerous to do, especially with an outlaw. Um, whenever the, what about that Hooka? whenever you think about it, it's actually one of the strategies. I'm going to give you a strategy, a really cool one. Um, whenever you open or you open with a nade or you open with a boom bot and you open that door, there's, you always run the risk that someone will walk into that TP. So instantaneously TPing off of that door opening is a big troll, especially with the outlaw. And I know that he knows this as well. Now I want to give you guys a little play that I actually made a little while ago. And this is with sky. So back when sky was meta, you used to go towards short and you would send a guiding light or a bird into the TP and it would just be to open the door. Now, if you had a teammate with you, that teammate would wait for the door to open and then they would tuck themselves into this position the entire time. It doesn't necessarily have to be omen, but you get my point. It's just someone that goes in there to lurk. And now that person will be unbeknownst to the enemy team knowing that they could be in that TP. And this is an easy cutoff of rotations, an easy way to defend hookah from post plant once you have the bomb down, you're playing our standard positions. So a cool little trick that you can use, and it goes off the same kind of concept as what we're falling into as it turns out a trap using utility to open this door. I always recommend having the door closed before going into this TP because it just catches things off guard for yourself. Now, the time in which you could hit this TP is when Cypher or when one of the other teammates from the B site, in this case it could be Sky, flashes or plays aggressive to support the push through the TP. Those would be your only options. Doing it like this, especially with the weapon that we have, is a little troll. Any teams on Eco, probably going for the outlaw buy, of course, standard buy. We've watched enough Wuhuja now over the past 10 days. Um, and I want to say again, thank you to everyone who watched this series. I appreciate you and I'm glad that you guys are along for the journey. It's been a lot of fun.
so far. But we've watched enough of Wuhujin now to kind of predict where his buy patterns are going to be. Smartly backing himself up, knowing that Showers was a threat for a little bit, so he has to be in an angle that can only be exposed to one threat at a time. Two showers. Yeah. Let me fight showers. Let me fight showers. Don't smoke. We sucked it. All right. Well, that's you. I'm holding short. No, no, you can't hold it with me. No, no, no. Cannot. Let me take next short. Let me take next. You could just ping here and say I've got this line. And if you're opping, outlawing, anything like that, say I got this line. I got this line. He really wants to fight short and not have this jet interfere. Because they're not going to assume that he has anything here. They're not going to expect it. So if they end up running out dry with the intention of focusing on the jet, it should be a free kill for Hooch here. There's two lines they could be peeking out on. Needing up top and below. No, I have them. I have them. They're not in. There's the free kill. So that guy was just not ready for that fight at all. So now, one thing that Dopai talked about was using this nade properly. In this situation, we've had this before. The nade can be bounced off here to delay plant. So we could be holding on to this much longer. It also, in this situation last time, he threw it deep and it didn't end up getting as much value. So right now, we want to be thinking about not killing with our nade, but deterring or zoning. All mollies, all nades are used for zoning, preventing an enemy player from being in a certain spot for a certain amount of time. That's our focus. If a nade ends up killing due to you deterring or zoning, then that's a bonus. I'm playing nade for plant. Wait, club, wait. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna nade it too. You gotta love the adaptation, right? He takes feedback so well, and that's why I know he's gonna be radiant. He's gonna, he's gonna get there for sure. Wait, you get up, Charlie. Nade, nade, nade. Because the nade bounces. Perfect, and they hit TP, and we're in great position to stop them. As you can see, the push out over on B, Hookah. Excellent work. The adaptation and the learning and the ability to drop Ego and just listen to his coach is great here. Oh, huge kill. Okay, here is where I'm thinking we could do something. Cypher's in a great spot. So instead of taking this dry fight here, which will guarantee Cypher a free kill, by the way, what could we do to guarantee that fight without threatening ourselves? Boombot, toss the Boombot out. Show that you're back here. Make them worry about you peeking the entire time, and that pulls attention this way. Now, once you've thrown that Boombot, you would throw it off this wall and bank it and bounce it and do all that good stuff and send it over towards long. You would then peek out from the left, which is what Dopey recommended before. I like peeking out from the left in this situation, considering the fact that Cypher is here. So we have two people peeking this one angle and trading off each other off of the action from each other in the shots. So instead of this dry fight right over here on this line, which he should be ready for instead of this one right now, you could use utility to further delay or stall out and annoy the enemy team from moving in and killing you right away. Cypher gets two there. Now imagine we peek from the left. This round is over. So the key is to look at where your teammates are positioned, play off them as much as you can. I always say, the best alternative or best option usually is to hold hands and holding hands means playing close to your teammates so that you guarantee that trade. That's the protocol that I want you focusing on from this VOD. I know exactly. well, I'm going to go back to the conversation that we had at the beginning of the VOD. Who enables our raise here? Sky. Could we not make a play this round? They are on a light buy here, so they are forcing. Could we not make a play? to throw a Sky Alt, Raze Alt combo. Why not? Why not go for it? If they lose this round, they're guaranteed Eco the following round. So that guarantees us a 12-8. Instead now, we've used our ult to try to recover the round, and they have the advantage. So being reactive versus proactive. And using your ult in such a way to guarantee round wins, and then this game way faster. they're going back to I'm not gonna lie. This is great. We can just hold on to this. We don't necessarily have to do anything. Go really slow. Take your time here. No rush. No rush, bro. Again, I'm going to pull your attention to this. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna pull your attention to this. And I'm gonna pull your attention to this. We could have waited, could have chilled, could have let our team come and scale. This is all factors, right? So yes, there is a risk that you could end up forcing them to leave and going towards the TP in that situation. It is a real possibility when pop your ult. But still, all of this stuff could have been done to stall them out. And at least then, if someone was positioned on showers, we would have been good. Or if you stall them out, at least then your team is in a better position to be able to take fights. These are things we need to consider. And we talked about it in several VODs before. <laughs> All right, so suggesting a play to grab control of the orb here. Very good standard play that should be done. Always look towards your alts and see if there's an alternative or an opportunity to win a round for free just by collecting an orb. Good boom bot here to confirm for information. Good, he's saying the same thing I am. There's the dog as well. So a little bit of a lack of coordination, but that happens in ranked. I think taking, okay, I was out gonna say, you, you could maybe stick to showers here. They're out, they're out, they're out, they're out. Right side, right side. I'm on top, top, on top, top, on top. I need in front. Oh, you're good, Jit. Front, front, front. Oh, you're good, Jit. Oh, you're good, Jit. Oh. Right side, right side. I'm on top, top, top. On top, on top of blocks, on top of blocks. I have to reload. Both has to take a fight here. You have smoke in two. Okay, Huge kill. Massive. Nade it, and then you just defuse. Yeah, you win. You can stick it. <laughs> I think we're okay to just stick there once the nade was out. Other thing too, Clove, make sure you're smoking on top of the bomb. Don't, don't smoke this area, smoke on top of the bomb. The reason why is that there's a wider berth. And if you smoke the person who's on the bomb, they can tap and they can peek out of the smoke. They will be out in the exposed open, whereas we have the uh, the control over the whole situation, being able to play in and around that smoke at any point in time. It's always better to smoke the bomb off versus smoking the entrance to where the person is coming from. Another factor for this too, so let's say that we tap the bomb and they play into the smoke, they can now peek up from this range, they can peek up from there, they can peek up from the center. So it's much harder for the person who's in the 1v1 to be able to deal with that situation altogether. It's a much better played half than we've seen from Mohujin in Bind. Notice we only played once on that truck, the entire half. So far. <laughs> with the Outlaw. Whereas the last fall that we watched, a long time ago now, it's been over a week. Wuhujin was playing that every single round almost. I think we had six or seven rounds that he was playing on that truck. And we've seen a lot of variety of positioning. So a vast improvement already on positioning alone. This is the power of VOD reviewing, reviewing your mistakes and correcting. Two v one situations, be communicating with each other, play, play with your teammate. Play with your teammate, hold hands with your teammate at all times. There's no sense in separating right now, because now you're forcing two 1v1s. Now, if you're clove in the situation, you force the fight. You look for the next fight, especially with the fact that you have alt. If you can get bombed down, of course, that alt will come into play. So in this situation, as again, just play with your clove. You can see how this clove is able to single out fights here because Wuhujin decides to go to the right. Always hold hands in that 2v1 and communicate aggressively with your teammate as to what you're doing. And because of that mistake, we now lost this round. What? Bit of a mistake from Mahush's part. It's our second round on the truck here. So this is a space that they're not suspecting if they decide to go short at this point. Because it's been so long since we played here. Looks like they're going to full send it to B. And this, they're doing this because it worked last round, so they're kind of desperate. Holds on the nade. Lovely. I believe the old Wuhujin would have just thrown this anyway. <laughs> the thing to think about is that the nade is going to be important to counter this as well for spacing and counter these four trying to scale off of the alt as well. Oh. 
This nade could definitely have some value here. Huge kill. Playing off to those. I love it. We're playing off the boom bot. 2v4 situation. Not looking too good here. Big kill from Jet. A whiff here from Reyna. Oh my goodness. This is now winnable. Oh shit. Ray's ult out popped. Love this. 2v1 situation. Huge kill. Oh my god. We have to go to top. We have to go to top. Top to get them out in the open. Love this. 3, 2, 1, swing. In the pocket position. Okay, this is, that means he's gotta be wrapping. He's gotta be wrapping. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> what a way to end the game. <laughs> All right. So, what did we learn from this VOD? Clear improvement from Uhujin. Clear, clear improvement from Uhujin, both on the communication side. Couple of the same kind of holes that he's had before. Improvement on the positioning. A lot of really, really good things from here, and it's good to see. He's really close to Mortal 3, and I know that haters are shaking their boots. Thank you so much for coming in and watching this VOD. Great to see the improvement from Uhujin, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care. Have a good one.